Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the recent and somewhat unusual discoveries from the famous asteroid Bennu, the asteroid that NASA visited a few years back and was able to retrieve samples from it, capturing a relatively large chunk with the probe you see behind me and basically then returning it to planet Earth. And though we've talked about this incredible mission many times before, it's now worth discussing it again because of some of the recent discoveries from just the last few weeks in regards to what's inside of the sample and the unusual compounds discovered within. And so let's discuss some of these details, starting with what we already know from previous asteroids and from previous sample retrievals. And actually, let's start with meteorites we've previously discovered on Earth, many of which have been studied over the years. So before NASA visited Bennu, they actually expected maybe something somewhat similar. This was expected to be some kind of a carbonaceous chondrite asteroid, basically containing a lot of carbon, but also containing these unusual structures referred to as chondrules, from the Greek chondros, which means grain. And while these unusual grains are usually present in most meteorites, and were always believed to be a major part of various building blocks that eventually build planets. It's not actually entirely clear how these unusual structures were formed, but they seem to represent some kind of a partially molten droplet, very likely from the beginning of the solar system, and possibly formed by something heating up the solar system, or maybe as a result of major collisions in a lot of these early meteorites. As a matter of fact, in the past, researchers proposed that they could have been formed as a result of some kind of a major supernova near us, or near the early solar system, or some kind of a major emission from a powerful star that heated up everything in the solar system extremely quickly. So we actually have no idea where they came from, but they seem to be almost everywhere. But surprisingly, nothing like this has been found inside Bennu. So far, the samples retrieved seem to not contain any chondrules, which at first was somewhat difficult to explain, but was then explained when the researchers realized what Bennu most likely went through early on. And that's because eventually, scientists discovered three grains of tiny millimeter-sized particles that seem to have similar compositions and shapes to chondrules, but appear to be just leftovers, implying that something over time destroying these chondrules, dramatically changing the composition of Bennu over time. And that something was revealed to be water. There's now a lot of evidence that for some reason early on, water was responsible for modifying most of the materials on Bennu, and there are signs of water alteration that seems to be present in many different minerals returned to planet Earth. And so here there are definite signs of chemical modification over time by basically liquid water. An interaction with water should be actually capable of destroying chondrules, turning them into something else. And today this is explained as Bennu just being a tiny leftover from a much larger body, some kind of a protoplanet or some kind of a planetoid, possibly part of the so-called Polana family, related to asteroid Polana, whose orbit you see right here, with that larger planetoid eventually getting destroyed by something, possibly through some kind of a collision, and creating a bunch of smaller pieces, including Bennu, and a lot of similar asteroids. And inside Bennu there is a lot of evidence that the parent body most likely went through several water-related episodes before its fragments coalesced into Bennu, with some of the recent studies discovering a tremendous amount of minerals that can only be formed in pristine water conditions, suggesting that the protoplanet potentially contained liquid water inside, and a lot of minerals within that object eventually got shredded apart and coalesced into Bennu. And so the main assumption today is that Bennu was most likely formed approximately 2 billion years ago to maybe 700 million years ago as a result of a major collision or a major destruction of a large planetesimal object. We're actually going to discuss this in more detail in one of the videos really soon because we now know of several objects connected to this event and many of them seem to have very similar composition. So do subscribe if you'd like to find out more in that video that's going to be coming out really soon. But here there are clear signs that a lot of particles from the impact eventually landed on the surface of Bennu and are still there today. So essentially a lot of the samples on the surface very likely came from that larger rock that most likely no longer exists. But interestingly, in the most recent study, McCoy and his team discovered something really, really exciting inside these samples. One of the first surprising discoveries was magnesium phosphate, and they actually thought at first that this was a contaminant. But the thing is, nothing like this technically exists on Earth, mostly because it's usually too fragile to survive on Earth and normally transforms into something else almost right away. And while the discovery of this unusual mineral once again confirms that this asteroid most likely came from some kind of a primitive ocean world. But more importantly, 
the phosphates here very likely played a role in forming organic molecules that have also been discovered in this sample. The sample is rich in a lot of different phosphates, and it's also rich in carbon and nitrogen, all of them essential components for life to exist. They also discovered a lot of compounds that were clearly affected by liquid water, for example, phyllosilicates, compounds that are usually bound to water molecules, at least in most meteorites, and a lot of different organic molecules and hydrated minerals, all confirming the existence of liquid water sometimes in the past. And then Glavin and his team additionally discovered something else. Here they found a lot of nitrogen-based compounds, including 14 out of 20 amino acids, or essentially building blocks of life, various nucleobases, which we normally find inside DNA and RNA, and very complex salts and clay minerals, including complex acids and organic molecules, that are very often associated with life. And this abundance of amino acids in this tiny sample suggests that all of them were formed in low temperature conditions, most likely in ammonia-rich fluids, and also suggesting that the larger planetoid most likely came from the outskirts of the solar system where ammonia ice can exist. But I guess even more excitingly, implying that many of these compounds that eventually made their way to Earth were possibly delivered in this way basically formed on the outskirts of the solar system and then through the process of collisions eventually made their way to the inner solar system and landed on planet Earth. With the additional discovery of tiny crystals and tiny salty minerals, confirming that a lot of water that existed here was most likely extremely salty. This was basically brine water. A lot of different salt minerals such as halides and sylvites seem to have formed as a result of brine water evaporating leaving behind a bunch of crystals. And because in this case a lot of different salts and a lot of different carbonates and phosphates were discovered in this sample, this was even more evidence that this object, or the parent body, used to have some kind of a relatively large salty ocean. And intriguingly these salts and all of these deposits are actually somewhat similar to what we usually find in various salt lakes on Earth when they tend to evaporate too. So basically here in terms of chemical makeup, whatever we found on Bennu seems to be extremely similar to a typical salt lake on our own planet. And this obviously confirms that back in the days, this object had liquid water, it actually had salty liquid water, and this water existed somewhere out there, really far away, very likely 2 billion years ago. But this is also important for another reason. We know that in general, salt minerals also serve as a catalyst for formation of organic molecules. So here we're talking about stuff that life is made out of, such as nucleotides. And because nucleotides and amino acids had been discovered in this sample, this presents us with a very intriguing picture. A picture of some kind of a distant object, really far away, filled with salty, briny water, carbon-rich environment, and very likely suitable for assembling early life. Now obviously it doesn't prove the existence of life on that object, or that life possibly started here, but it does present us with evidence that everything needed for life was there and technically could have started there as well. Or at least if this object was not destroyed. But we know that other objects were not destroyed. Other objects with potentially similar conditions where life might have started as well. And here we're talking about at least two objects that we think might be extremely similar. Similar to that parent body from which Bano came. The most exciting candidate is the moon of Saturn known as Enceladus. Here there are definite signs of underground ocean and possibly similar salty water inside. So Enceladus in some sense might resemble that ancient body that was destroyed a long time ago and created Bano. Likewise, we have objects like Ceres, which possibly has something similar inside, and even objects like Europa, that's also believed to contain similar composition, similar oceans, and very likely a lot of brine water with lots of organic compounds inside. And that means that this discovery from Bennu just gave us even more reasons to try to go to Enceladus and Europa in order to maybe find life there. Because right now it really looks like whatever this is, it seems to have been formed from a very exciting ancient object that was filled with salty water and conditions needed for life. And so after years of investigations, and after this really cool collision and a collection of samples, we finally have direct proof that ancient water existed somewhere else out there, and the leftovers of this object are now orbiting somewhere out there in the vicinity of planet Earth. Now it's still not clear if this collision had any effect on the evolution of our own planet, but we'll discuss some of these propositions and some of the more exotic ideas in that future video about the parent body of asteroid Bennu that's going to be coming out really soon. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, 
or by buying the 1-4% t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.